What is up, guys? Today we are joined by Austin Babbitt, a.k.a. Ass Pizza, and needs no introduction. If you don't know who this guy is, you must have been sleeping under the under a fucking rock like Patrick Starr for the last 10 years. Here he is. Guy just went on tour. We're going to talk about his plan to save the world, his plan to eradicate seed oils and aluminum in deodorant. But first, <laughs> before we do that, I want to talk to him about the tour he just went on. Austin, you just traveled to all 50 fucking states. What's up? Chilling, man. How are you? How are you? you? Guys, for people who don't know know the backstory of me and this guy, I've known this guy for fucking years. We met in Sunday school, story of Queens, New York. Two years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Probably 20 fucking 10. That's crazy, right? It's fucking crazy, man. So... For people wondering where we are right now, too, we're in Greenpoint, New York. Guys, I had a house in Astoria, my childhood home. I mm-hmm. was born and raised there, grew up there. Tried to fucking buy that house. My mom was selling it. I tried really hard to just buy it. She wasn't having it. She said, oh, Austin, this is a big responsibility, a liability, yada, yada. Look, no matter what, mothers are always right. So I got to respect her, but um, if I owned that house, it would be lit. Because <laughs> that's an asset forever. I could rent that shit out, and that shit's going up. But, <laughs> but I don't have it, and I had to get an apartment in a rush. I was like, fuck it, we need to find somewhere in New York. So we're in some fucking Greenpoint new apartment fucking prison. Chinese development. Yeah, just fake furniture, all this shit real quick. They said, let's get these people in there. But I'm here for a year. I'm just going to grind it out. There's a gym here. I'm on a weight loss journey. But anyway. Hell yeah. So that whole house situation, I had to empty my house, do all this shit. It was very emotional. I had to say goodbye. This was a few days before tour, like a day before tour, like one or two days before tour. We had to pack up every single thing in the fucking house, in the trailer, drive it down to Tennessee. In Tennessee, I have my print shop there. We have 730 printing, and, uh, you know, that's just a little uh, headquarters, you know, where a lot of shit goes on. And that's where I focus. I want to build factories out there and do shit like that in the future. But that was right before tour, probably May 20-something. We started the 50-state tour on July, or May 27th. So it was very stressful, and we put together everything last minute because the idea for the tour even came, it started as a joke Mm -hmm. because we did a smaller tour earlier this year. And by the way, guys, when you hear tour, you're probably like, oh, does this guy make music? Does he do this, yada, yada? Listen, the, the tour is for clothing, and we bought a trailer from Trailers Plus, <laughs> and it was $9,000. We converted it into, like, a mobile store for pop-ups. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, we screwed the fucking hangers on the wall. And um, so be- it's cool. There's a hangers. There's a whole desk. It's basically like a store you can walk in. And <laughs> you can walk in, spend your money, and get the fuck yeah. out. And we fucking wrap with vinyl, yeah. the outside, all the shit. But, um, oh, yeah. So the tour is pop-ups in every city. That's what I'm trying to say to you guys. It's just pop-ups. We pull up to a parking lot. We post the location. People come. Once the line dies down, we're off to the next state. So we did an earlier fucking... Uh, this year, In the beginning of the year, we did a smaller tour with like four or five states. And it was just, you know, like New York, L.A., and fucking Texas and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And there were so many comments like, Yo, uh, you should come here, bro. Like, why are you only going there? Blah, blah, blah. Like, a thousand comments. Everyone is just suggesting to come there, come there. Yeah, yeah. And I started to the Brazil. tour. The whole tour idea started in 2018 when PayPal froze my funds. And I was like, fuck this. Let's just sell the shit on the fucking corner, mm-hmm. literally. Yeah, like, yeah. Meet me at this parking lot. Here's the jeans. There's the cash. It's over, you know? So that was the whole idea, and um, that's when it started in 2018, but I haven't really done it again until, like, basically, whatever, fuck it. Everyone was complaining about the goddamn Mm -hmm. fucking thing. Come here, come here, da-da-da. So 
on the first tour this year, it was a joke where my brother was like, we just need to do the 50 state tour. And we were like, ha ah, yeah, that'd be crazy. And then, um, and then like a month after we finished the small tour, I had this idea for my next project, my next chapter in life. And, you know, I needed funds mm -hmm. for the project because no matter what I do, fucking every art show, every fucking tour, everything, I'm always left with no fucking money by the end of it. Classic. It doesn't, I don't know how money is an illusion. It comes, it goes, it's fucking whatever. I'm going to figure my shit out. But so I'm, we were planning the 50 state tour for like next year. Like, okay, we got to figure this out. Da, da, da. And then I was just sitting in the house and I was like, fuck it, we just need to figure this out and do it right now, mm -hmm. you know, like, just hit, <clears throat> just figure it out, we gotta yeah. figure it out, if something goes wrong, it's part of the fucking story, you know, but we're here now, and we went to every single state, and it's fucking insane. Did you pre-print all the merch for it? The like, merch was work? printed seconds before we had to hit the road, <laughs> seconds. So it was printed before the whole yeah. thing? How many, how many, like, how'd you haul all that shit? So... Were was People, there like a second trailer for just shit? Yeah, so we had the original pickup truck. We had an F-150. That's what we went on the first tour earlier this year with. Uh -huh. It's just an F-150. 2019 F-150, we put like fucking 200,000 miles on that shit, right? All right. And we're giving it away. 200,000 miles. Still runs great. But I literally bought a new truck just for this tour, an F-250 diesel powered. Nice. And we got an airbrush and shit with the goblin and everything. That was literally probably three days before tour. Wow. I had to figure out how to sand the shit, get Lamore Supreme to airbrush it, and get someone in Astoria to fucking clear coat it again. Yeah. Then we had to pack everything up at the Astoria house, and then we had to drive to Tennessee, unload it in Tennessee into storage units. There's just so much going on, I can't even fucking explain it. Everett, we stayed up all night. Everett drove... He literally couldn't speak. He was like mumbling and like blah, 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 blah. We think it's from a Celsius he drank because they say it gives people strokes and shit. But like he was literally fucking exhausted. Like he couldn't even speak or anything. Mm -hmm. and, and then people are like, oh, they're probably relaxing before tour. Da, da, da. The tour was our vacation, bro. Yeah. Because we were working so hard before tour. We were up printing, fucking doing all this shit. And... The Goblin shirts were only printed fucking... I had the idea for the Goblin shirts like a few days before tour. Mm -hmm. So I tell James, who is my partner at 7.30 fucking printing, I'm like, look, we got to make these. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the main thing about tour is uh, trying to keep the product stocked the best yeah. we can. So we take it day by day, but, you know, we left with a good chunk of shirts and, you know, obviously... Like how many did you leave with? I forget. Probably like 400... Somewhere and did you there. have him like airdrop you? Like, how did you get restocked? So we would either, if we were close to Tennessee, we'd have someone drive, but we actually didn't do that. I don't think, but, um, usually we would ship it to hotels and shit. That's great. Like overnight it. Yeah. Like how many, sh like big ass packages? Yeah. Like we could have done better with like, obviously I like, since it's so last minute and rushed and like, it's hard to plan things like. I wish we did have more, uh, like, variety of products. We only had, like, five different things available. But, um, like, the shirts were most important. I was like, look, we always need these shirts available, like, no matter yeah, what, because we can't pull up and have nothing, you know? So we did pretty good. Like, we were never out of stock the whole time. So Wow. And that we every, every state, there was a lot of kids that pulled up. It's crazy. You wouldn't probably be able to do that without owning your own print shop. Yeah. Like having no. James do custom. That's numbers. why it's such an evolution in every step. It just like everything happens at the right time. Like it's crazy. it just works. So I'm like, we could do this. Let's push it. Let's push it. Let's see what we can do. And it, it works out, bro. And like we pulled up, we don't have security. We don't have anything. We have a good team of people like my brother, his wife, Sebastian, Clint. And that's it. Like that was us on the road. And, you know, anything could happen. The fucking trucks could break down. We could get robbed. We could get fucking stabbed. But it's really a miracle that it all worked out, and it's a blessing, yeah. seriously. And so you started in Tennessee? Yes, I started in Tennessee.
Yeah. That's insane. And it's like these clothes are literally as fresh as you could get, like by a fresh Crazy. baked fucking donuts. Like these are fucking off the press into the fucking truck, right to the pop up. Like how'd no, you get to Alaska? Fresh. So for Hawaii and Alaska, we just um, packed fucking duffel bags and flew there from Seattle. And, and just leave the trucks mm-hmm. where in a parking lot? So Everett was guarding the trucks, doing maintenance on the trucks and like doing all that while That's we were crazy. doing the pop-ups. And how'd those go? How'd Alaska go? Alaska was fire. We had a COD 4 tournament. <laughs> it was fire. Like, and what the winner get? Uh, we usually give the winner like a pair of shoes or like whatever they want, really. Oh, they get to pick one thing from the truck. Yeah. Yeah. And um, for people who don't know, too, we had, like, patches exclusive for oh, every yeah, state. Yeah. So, like, kids wanted to collect all the patches. There's one kid, Theodore, who came to every single stop. Including yeah. Alaska and Hawaii? Everything. Everything, yeah. What the hell? And uh, I'm good friends with Theodore now since we fucking got to know each other on the, on the road so much. And um, he uh, makes like hand poured silver and stuff, like yeah. casted silver. So I'm actually working with him on some shit too. So, so he followed you behind the truck in his own car? No, I'm, we would just see him at the pop up. We don't know where the fuck he goes. <laughs> we thought he was out to get us at first. He could be a killer, all this shit. So we had to make sure, but he's a real cool guy. <laughs> did you, how, how many stops did it take you for you to notice that he kept popping up? <laughs> he said at the first stop, I'm coming to every stop mad casually. And I'm like, no way. He's going to fucking. He, he's going to get bored. He's going to back yeah. out. But it was also good, too, that he there was someone following us along that much because I was like, bro, we can't fucking... We got to put on a show yeah, for this true. guy. Like, like we got to make it interesting and stuff. And um, I did. I bought him, like, a, pol- a Polaroid and, like, a notebook. To, he journaled the whole thing. And um, so every pop-up, we'd do a challenge, right? Yeah. For a kid to win free shit, because it's like, you know, it's weird just pulling up and being like, all right, yeah. you bought my product, I signed your shit, I'm out of here. Like, we got a group of fucking people together yeah. who just want to have fun and shit. So I was like, I'm like, nah, like, so we would do challenges, whether it's who could do the most push ups, who could do the wall sits the longest. We invented a game called Dirt Circle. Yeah. It's basically like elimination dodgeball. And, um, that we're we're gonna work on that, make that a real thing. It's the next sport that's gonna take over. It's called Dirt Circle. You'll see content, you'll see all that. It's coming. Everett. Shout out to Everett. I say he's the inventor of that game. So tell me about the challenges. Like what's the thought process behind doing that? Like you said you you gotta you gotta like give back to them uh-huh. a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Well, like first it started out as the kids who would just like uh kinda hang around mm-hmm. and it's like these kids came out here, some kids drive the hours, you know, and it's like, okay, they bought the shit and they met me and it's just like, they leave and it's like, like, no, let's like do something for them. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're happy to do anything. So even just a race or anything and it, it just turned into fun. And also, you know, it's, it's repetitive for us to just do a pop up and leave. Like, yeah, it gets we want to look forward to something. Yeah, so it's right. like, oh, today's challenge. We got to do this. I don't know. And, like, we have so much footage of this stuff, and I am putting together, like, a little uh, recap, and, like, we're doing the 50 States Tour book. It's going to be a hardcover, like, coffee table book. Nice. Photos of every state and everything, so that's coming soon, hopefully this year. And, uh, yeah, the challenges are just, like, literally to have fun, and mm-hmm. it's mad wholesome. Like, like, once we start playing and shit, like, kids are actually having fun and they're yeah, like yeah. holy shit i forgot you could just go to the park and fucking do this shit right, you know? right right so yeah the challenges are really really cool and uh what was the name that kid got a special patch the 50 states kid yeah and what was it called <laughs> american Psycho hero or something no, no, no. 40 states is a s- okay so there, <laughs> let me try to remember five states if you collect five patches you get the adventurer patch if you collect 10 states it's the road warrior Road Warrior, Road, oh, no, no, 10 is Road Runner, then Road Warrior, and then Road Master, then Psychopath is 40 patches, That's crazy. 50 patches is American Hero, and there's only one American Hero besides the team who fucking went with us, and that's Theodore. And is there a couple kids that did, like, 10 states or something? Yeah, yeah, a lot of kids, you know, I mean, it's technically not fair, because, you know, they buy it on Grailed and shit like that, but... Oh. Like, 
because they redeemed the patches and you could buy it on Grailed, fucking whatever. But there were still a few kids who came to at least like 10 states, like uh, the smaller states, like Midwest or whatever, you know, like whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it seems like connecting with the audience in that way and like re reminding them that they can just go outside it seems like a common theme uh -huh. that relates back to more of your beliefs about like life mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. do you want to like take a second to like tell those kids what those beliefs are i mean we talked about it back in the interview about the magazine mm -hmm. where it's just about you know everything's supposed to destroy you type shit yeah. About going outside. Did you feel like this was good for you in that way too? Yeah. No, like it's really eye opening just to see like how excited kids are to like meet up. Like, you know, kids talk to each other in the line. Mm -hmm. They kids have told me they met and became friends at tour stops and like all this shit, you know, because if you're living in fucking Kansas yeah. There's not a lot of people who would come to the Ass Pizza pop-up, but those people who do come probably have similar fucking interests and shit. So, right. like, that's people in their communities linking up and, like, talking to each other. So that's the whole thing that makes me happy is, like, kids coming outside. And, look, all these kids have anxiety and they're scared to pull up to something, you know, and, you know... I'm sick of dropping stuff online. Right. <laughs> it's okay. Just... I'm sick of dropping stuff online and it's over. I said, oh, come on. One more sale. Let's do it. No, no, no. Let's do this. Like, it's repetitive. It's fucking annoying. Like, just dropping shit. Just trying to get the most money. And it's it's not what I want or stand for. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. And so, basically, what I'm saying is, like, kids are scared to come to something. Right. But when they come there and overcome their anxiety or whatever, they shake my hand, they think I'm a scary guy or something. I say, hey, how are you? Yeah, of course, I'll sign this. I'll... I never said no to a photo. I never said no to a fucking signing something ever in my life. Mm -hmm. So they overcome their anxiety and they're like, you know, this isn't bad. Like I fucking went to the Ashby to pop up and played a fucking dirt circle with mad right, kids. Right, 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 right. Like, and I want to show these kids I'm just a regular fucking person. No fucking ego, fucking regular no cool guy, no too cool for school shit, you know? Right. Like, I talk to these kids. I'm looking for fucking kids who are interesting, just talking about cool stuff. I give them advice, anything. I care about those motherfucking kids, you know? Yeah. Like, and when you own a piece of my clothing, now I like there to be a story behind it. These mm -hmm. kids pulled up to a fucking Walmart parking lot, a weird fucking parking lot, abandoned Kmart, and they bought the shit, shook, shook my hand, and it's a story, you yeah. know? Not like, yeah, I clicked the link in yeah, his bio yeah. and fucking ordered it and came in fucking six months, and I hate him. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, it's definitely, it's the complete opposite of every, I mean, it's so, it's the part of it that makes it nice is like the kind of typical way people sell clothes online mm -hmm. or anything online is so unpersonal and so robotic and uh -huh. just, I mean, small it doesn't matter the size of business if you're clicking a button and the product's coming to your door and there's nothing else behind mm -hmm. besides that you might as well be buying chinese products on mm -hmm. amazon mm -hmm. even if it's like a expensive yeah. fashion thing but it's like it's also cool that it's like you are the only kind of place where somebody i mean that i can think of where somebody can have that experience that's mm. different than buying an amazon product but it's also cool because you're like the OG of it, you know, mm -hmm. it's not like you, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, that was kind of my idea too for the 50 States tour. Cause I obviously see kids trying to do like more in-person pop-ups and all that. And I said, you know, I, I started this shit. Let me really set the tone, show yeah. them how to do it legitly, like fully like 50 state tour. If, if someone could complete that, I'm impressed, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not easy to restock to even just be on the road for that long. It's just, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. So I really just want to make that known. Like, here it is. 50 States Tour accomplished. Ass pizza. Maybe, right. Like, you know? And um, what else was I going to say? 
<laughs> Too much. It's just oh, yeah, real. yeah. Yeah. So basically about dropping shit online. You know, I obviously still drop shit online every so often, but it's not enjoyable. And this leads me on to the next chapter, mm. which I'm only going to talk about a little, but the next chapter is coming. We're approaching the 10 year anniversary of when I started making clothes. Like end of 2013 is when I started. So this is 2023 right now. We're approaching 10 year anniversary. 10 year anniversary is the next chapter and I'm stepping everything up. I, everything in this past 10 years was practice, taking notes, learning things. It was an experiment. And this was a big experiment because we really, really tested everything. I was like, I've done it all. I've done it all, you know, like all this shit. And this is why I, I always thought long term and like, I know shit takes long. People mm -hmm. want instant success, all this. I'm 10 years in this shit and I'm still working hard and it's still a struggle. It's still all this. So this next chapter, I'm taking the responsibility to like really step it up a notch and I want to go back to my roots, making real clothing, like doing something good for the world, not mm -hmm. just doing quick drops, all the stuff, you know? So I'm excited about that. I've literally like, I'm so motivated and inspired right now. And that's from the tour. Like the tour has helped me with this because all you have is time to think <clears throat> and just fucking reflect and mm -hmm. see kids and see their reactions and talk to them. And like, you know, it reminds me like I'm blessed just to even be selling shit. Mm -hmm. I'm so blessed. This is what, this is what I've wanted to do since, you know, we met in Sunday school, literally mm -hmm. like this is, this is my dream, bro. This is my dream. And I have a long-term plan. So this next chapter is going to be the Babbitt chapter. Just a separate thing. Step up from everything I've been doing. And I want everything to be affordable. I want everyone involved. I want it to be physical. I want all the stuff that I stand for, this will stand for, you know? Mm -hmm. Like real shit, caring about people, caring about shit. And it just... I know it's a long-term plan and I even have plans beyond this that I just need full control over. Right. Everything I've done has been my, I have control. Right. I've never had, you know, funders. Yeah. None of that shit. I've always been there struggling to right. make what I want, you yeah. know, always. So, so tell, tell me more about the next chapter though. Like, is, is there anything besides clothes you want to get into like health yeah. related stuff? So the brand isn't going to be about like health too much, but right, it's going right, to stand right. for like the right thing. The lifestyle. It's going to be a lot of repurposed stuff. It's going to be a lot of just like real shit. Made in the USA. All made in USA. No Alibaba shit. And it's like I'm here to help America. That's right, really right, what right. I'm doing. I'm setting up stores in these small towns where kids have nothing better to do except drugs and fucking play video games and shit. I'll fucking hire these kids. Every tour stop, there's 10 kids asking, yo, like, if, if there's anything I could do to help you, fucking, let's, let's work on something. Like, I'll work for free. I'm going to do everything legitly, pay people, all the stuff. I just want to help people and mm -hmm. just fucking give them something to do. If you tell me right now, yo, let's go to a store. There's not one store in New York City that I could think of where it's interesting fucking any of the shit. It's all bullshit. There's nothing... Me coming from a person who just wants to have fun myself and I don't fucking do drugs or drink or any of that shit, like, there's nothing to do. And right now, I'm just on the, the shit where I'm just focused on myself, trying to get healthy, fucking doing all the shit. Mm -hmm. I'm only in the gym every single day, except Sundays, which is today. And I basically only talk to my girlfriend, Kelly. Yeah. I don't talk to anyone, like... I'm, I love all my friends and everything, but we're all doing our own shit. And yeah. it just, that's great. First of all, I'm super grateful for our friend group. Cause yeah, like yeah. that is our secret weapon. We're around so many fucking creative people. And just like, it's just insane that, you know, you'll hear, you'll hear fucking Steve, you'll hear Luca fucking Kerwin, Mike, the ruler, fucking you, anyone. And it's like, we all are in our own little world and it's like, wait, these guys have been childhood friends forever. Like mm -hmm. what? That's so crazy. So that's a blessing. Like, 
So you're just like becoming more introspective, you think? It's a weird thing about going, getting older. It's like, we don't, we don't really go. I mean, we used to just <laughs> meet up five times a week and walk around. Yeah. And it's like, it's almost nice. Nowadays, it's kind of the opposite where we don't really be doing shit like that. But then when we do hang out, it's always like, it's just a weird thing about getting yeah. older. But we are really all in our own world. Yeah. It's no. awesome. And it's awesome too. Like I could not see fucking you or Steve for like a year. Yeah. And we link up and it's completely normal. Like I know. We don't even fucking ask each other what's going on. We're just cracking jokes and shit. Like I know it's I went to Steve's office in LA and I was just looking around and I was like, damn, like this this like I was looking at all the different sets of toys and I was just like, damn, this he's putting in work. It's like what I reflect on is just like one shirt, for example. One kid buys that shirt, even if it sits in his closet forever and he never wears it. It's like that is a piece of me that I created that mm -hmm. is out there, you know, yeah. and it's it's these shirts are in every single state. And I know for a fact, yeah, because we cool. there's people in every single state who came and bought stuff. And that's like even just one little thing like that. It's just like I just see it as like spreading, yeah. you know, like it just the roots are there. Yeah. And it's like, I have to take responsibility as myself. Like there's people who look up to me, kids, all this stuff. There's 13 year olds who come to the pop-up and I'm like, I never supported, you know, anything bad, but mm -hmm. I really got to just like show people. Yeah. By example, I want to get healthy. I want to cut out all poison. I want to, you know, I never done drugs or alcohol in my life. My advice to any anyone is to don't not do drugs and alcohol. Like, definitely not drugs. I think with your stuff, when you're talking about like a online drops being kind of like, you know, not that you have to. I don't know. I feel like you doing online drops is a lot different than like some. I mean, I don't really want. To, just like if I'll believe it, whatever. But like, if some kid buys like from an online mm -hmm. drop, it's just like. They're literally taking their money and like giving it to this guy uh -huh. who's giving them like a shitty retarded product. Uh -huh. But I feel like even with you, like I, I would never buy anything from an online drop. But with you, it's like it's a little bit different because you are building, you know, like if I'm if I'm giving you a hundred dollars for a shirt or whatever, it's like it's kind of like giving you a brick to build like this beautiful coliseum that you are building for all of us uh -huh. to enjoy, you know. So it's like, no, that's a cool it's way like to funding, it, yeah. it's like people, it's almost like <clears throat> donating to a political cause yeah. buying your shirt because uh -huh. you do have a deeper message. That's what I think about too. And it kind of sucks because like, obviously kids want their product fast and whatever. Yeah. I don't fucking care. Like I, in the same way, I would, I would want to buy something and it comes. And obviously people have waited almost fucking a year for my product sometimes. And, um, but like those people had really pushed me to the next level. Mm -hmm. Like now I can buy this screen print machine. Now I can do this. Like, yeah. and it's like, these people don't know, like there's days where I drop shit just cause I need fucking money to eat. Yeah. Like seriously, especially back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, like, like they were literally helping me create history yeah. and I'm not going saying I'm finna buy a Ferrari and fucking no, no. Balenciaga and fucking all this First of all, all that shit's a scam. You kids should not buy that shit. Fuck all that shit. They're scamming you, trying to keep you down. Fuck all that. But I have a responsibility. I feel like it's not my money. Yeah. It's not my money. It's everyone who fucking supports me money, and I'm doing the right thing. Look, yeah. I invested in a fucking screen print shop in Tennessee. That's a real screen print shop. Yeah. Like, we could just fucking be a screen print shop, you mm -hmm. know? But now everything's being made so much faster, all this, and the next chapters, I have so many ideas where it just it just goes perfectly. Like everything goes hand in hand perfectly. And it just fucking Yeah. I'm not buying I don't have a car. Right. I don't have any of this shit. I just got my first fucking apartment. I've been living out I've been paying rent to my mom, but she sold the house. I tried to buy it, couldn't. Yeah, it's important to remember that it's it's interesting too because I know a lot of your customers are understand that thing that when they 
they're supporting like a larger thing. But it's funny to think that like a lot, a large percentage of the sales come from kids that just like don't understand mm -hmm. that at all and just want to drip. Yeah. But I don't know. It's nice that you can kind of uh, support or not support, but like satisfy both audiences. Yeah. A core fan base that you have, mm -hmm. but then also kids who found you yesterday. Yeah. My main thing is like, I just really always want to do the right thing and just like be the best I could be. And there's kids who are, would die to be in our position to be, you know, even have their art recognized, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I can't take that for granted. That's fucked up for every kid who, um, you know, wants to do something, you know? Mm -hmm. But I want to set an example of hard work and patience <clears throat> and all this and that's it. Do you want to get more into like uh, video stuff? Yeah, like, I actually am. So with this next project coming up, I am doing like video things of like artists that I fuck with and like documenting their shit. Oh, really? And Babbitt, this next chapter, it's going to be something for the whole world. My my whole thing right now, like I do feel like I've been talking to the same audience for fucking the past five years, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, um, you know... With my shit, it's complicated for someone to understand like that, mm -hmm. you know, like, because even with this fucking fucking interview, like, there's so much shit. It's hard for me to even it's fucking so talk much about lore. it. And shit goes so much back further. Like, there's yeah. episodes of this shit, like Star Wars. It's insane. Like, so yeah. that's my next chapter, more broadening my audience. Yeah. And then you kind of have to put on the fucking act of, not an act, but like you have to market it the right way where people understand it, you yeah. know? Because, like, people people don't understand it. It's only people who know me understand it. Yeah. You know? it's The lore is so insane, and it's like, you have so much lore, but you haven't... I feel like if you were like Andrew Tate... Like, Andrew Tate has crazy lore, but they've been mm -hmm. making those vlogs for, like, 10 yeah. years. But it's crazy to think that, like, if someone wants your lore, it's like, what can they even do? Like, yeah. there's some videos yeah. where it's like, I was pizza was born in, but first of all, mm. a lot of the shit that they say is retarded yeah. and wrong. Yeah. But, but no, you know what I was thinking? Like, you know, the kid Steiny from Nelf Boys? Yeah. Like he's retarded, you know, <laughs> but it's like, he has such an, like he, how, how is it that he has a large audience in you? Yeah, Someone yeah, who's yeah. like original and mm -hmm. smart Yeah. because they just, I think with Barstool and just put things like that, it's just the widening of the audience is the only mm -hmm. thing they care about. But yeah, it's kind of depressing. Like, you know, I know if I make TikToks, it's like, hey, I have a brand called da, da, da. We just went on a 50 state tour. Yeah, I mean, yeah, every yeah. Every single state. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking like destroying myself yeah, yeah, doing yeah. that. And like, it would pay off. And it's not even that cringe, honestly, but it's just like, it's just, I don't want to do it. And it sucks. But like, I am like, with this whole new plan, I'm just like, it's going to be videos and content and shit like that. And oh, I always thought of this stuff as, you know, I'm not going to be famous until I die. You know, mm -hmm. like it's the story that gets told afterwards. People don't give a fuck about anyone, you mm -hmm. know, like, oh, uh, whatever. You know, like <laughs> people don't give a fuck until you die. And then they put the pieces together. And I'm also putting together a book of the tour, and I want to release a 10th anniversary book, and that will have the That's real awesome. story, you know? So yeah. 10th anniversary, we got a lot of shit coming for sure. It's also cool. It's You have to do it in like a, a way that's balanced where the lore you do give away, like me and Marlon were talking about this, the lore you do give away is the lore that just creates more questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, people would even be more confused, you know? Like, yeah, we already yeah. have so much to talk about. Imagine we were talking about, like, the old fucking come up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Selling, scamming people on fucking, uh, <laughs> what's it called? Craigslist, Ehorn? Yeah, we would fucking pretend to be... Thoughts. Yeah. We'd have to talk to horny guys, say, I'll send Pete pics for It's crazy that right? Andrew Tate did the same thing, yeah. but they just did it in a, a more adult way. <laughs> but like, talking, they did the same shit where they had the cam girls and they would talk to them mm -hmm. on behalf of the cam girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, People say, like, I see comments, oh, Aspitz is a rich kid, blah, blah, blah. Especially hard, when yeah. I was younger, because we had acne, yeah, yeah. or Goins, all the shit. But they don't know how hard we fucking grinded and, like, just figured it out. We were just fucking around. Like, 
And at the time, we didn't know how crazy it was being that young and like figuring this crazy shit out. And we watched the whole world get on these trends that we were on, bro. Like four years later. People were not wearing Supreme. People were not wearing oh, Rick man. Owens, Acne Studios, all this. Four or five years later, you can't miss that shit it's on crazy. the street. Like the fit yeah. checks you see downtown where it's like, what are you yeah. wearing today? It's crazy no. that that shit is so mainstream. We, you know? Our friend group is built off of just going in that area in New York and being like, yo, he's wearing Supreme. Like, what's up? We've seen him yeah. fucking five times today. Let's say hello. Yeah. And I it's know. it's like, that's what people don't understand. That's it. such a bygone era. It's so yeah. insane. It's also sad, too, because, like, all our friends were made outside of school. Yeah. I had... Like, I don't talk to anyone who I went to high school with that I dropped out of. Best thing I ever did, by the way. Um, like, I feel like kids can't pull up to Soho and just chill. Hell no. You know? And that's even kids that live in the city. But you were talking about meeting someone in bumfuck. Yeah. Which is like, it's, I'm not even trying to be like an elitist or anything, but it's true. It's like they're, if you, you know, even if you get, the thing is with drugs there, it's so Im- pervasive and constant yeah. because it's just like you know you run out of people to talk to in your town yeah. so quickly and yeah. then it's like what else are you going to do and it's like you either do drugs which is like obviously terrible but or you get on discord with, and like mm-hmm. become like an internet yeah. freak uh-huh. which is and even there's, as terrible there's so many bad influences out there oh my god there's no good influences no of course not name one person that inspires you to really fucking do this shit you know Andrew yeah. Tate was the one who broke through and fucking inspired people, you know, yeah. like, and look what happened to him. So much. He's bullshit. in jail. Yeah, literally. So I've met these people. I know these motherfuckers. Yeah. I know X. I've had deep conversations with X and all this shit. He was trying to inspire kids to do good, bro. They fucking get rid of anyone who's trying to promote something good, bro. Mm. You literally have to play. It's that's the matrix. That's the matrix. They fucking strategize to keep you depressed Keep you scared. Keep you fucking violent. Listen to the radio. It's all music's about fucking sex and violence and shoot someone, blah, blah, blah. It's half of these people are murderers anyway. All mm-hmm. this rap shit. I don't listen to violent music anymore. I still like Kodak. I still like Shaq, all that, you know, like, but you have to know it's not fucking yeah, yeah. serious. Oh, I'm going to shoot this guy to prove that I'm hard, like. I want to represent something good. Like, fuck all that shit. That leads you nowhere. I want people in these small towns to just work towards something. Like, right. fucking go to the gym. Fucking pick up an activity. Collect something. Do something productive. You just know? do like, something productive yeah. or fun. Even if you're just hanging out with anyone. Like, building relationships. Like, yeah. I'm grateful, too, because if we didn't have each other and we didn't have our friends, I would have no friends. You oh, know? Yeah. Like... I can't meet someone today and be like, hey, yeah, let's hang out. You know, like, it's not as relaxed as just like, you know, pull up. It's back to normal. you know. And I would say for those small town kids, it's like, it's better to be lonely than to be surrounded by people that are like, Mm -hmm. you know, just like detrimental to your soul. Yeah. The one thing like I just wish I knew when I was younger is like, everything has an effect on you, you know, like. We would eat poison. Yeah. We would drink fucking soda, not knowing how bad it is. We would eat fucking all the seed oil fucking bullshit that our yeah. moms would make us and all this. And it just because people aren't aware. And once you become aware, like it all started for me just from water. I was like, oh, there's microplastics in there. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, let me figure out what the best water is. And then you apply that to every single thing in the world. And you're oh, like, yeah. oh, wait, this gives you cancer. This makes you fucking retarded. All this like. I was, yeah, um, it's, it's a rabbit hole, bro. I was thinking when I was in LA this last time, I drank a good amount and then, and then I was just feeling like really bloated mm-hmm. and anxious. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to stop drinking for a little bit. And then my aunt actually put me, I mean, we've been talking about this for a while, but she really doesn't wear deodorant. Yeah. And my dad doesn't wear deodorant, but my dad does it for a different reason. <laughs> Because he just doesn't smell. But my aunt, <laughs> it's like, or Liver King. It's like he doesn't, mm. he does smell, but he, he doesn't wear deodorant. And I was thinking about alcohol. Like people talk about alcohol and sort of like even bad food, like really bad food, like Chinese food. If you eat Chinese food and you wake up the next morning, you have like a, you feel like shit. You'll say, oh mm. shit, I eat Chinese food. 
But the thing is, like, when people only realize what things are doing to them in those extremes, like being, having a hangover or like a hangover from food. But you have to realize it's like everybody, even if they're not hungover, like even when I'm not hungover, I'm pretty much probably going to be like feel like shit yeah, yeah. or just anxious. Uh -huh. And I've kind of come to the conclusion that it's like everything, even the things that aren't as obviously affecting you is affecting you. Yeah. Like if Chinese food, if that sauce is affecting me, then who's to say the, the, mm -hmm. the kind of sub ingredients in pizza sauce yeah. aren't affecting me yeah. and toothpaste and deodorant. And then it's like, oh, that was in a microwave. Maybe that fucking right. radiation does that. Oh no, this was actually stored in a plastic container. Oh, the plastic. And when you say that, people yeah. look at you like you're retarded, but it's like, yeah. if I have two glasses of wine, I'll wake up the next day feeling like shit. Mm -hmm. So who's to say that if I put aluminum in my armpits for 25 years, yeah. I don't have some yeah. response. But yeah, I'm totally done with that shit. No, I'm, I'm, my whole idea is like, only make the right decisions. Like, on tour, we had no fast food. We fucking went to Whole Foods, like, try the best we can to eat clean yeah, and yeah. do all that. I'm only making my own food now and only going out, you know, once in a while. Yeah. A good restaurant with good quality fucking organic shit. But um, that shit, um, <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian is crawling on the floor past the camera. Dude, but that shit's fucked, bro. And it's a loophole because it's an endless fucking yeah. rabbit hole of like, oh, the, if you fucking touch polyester, it soaks into your skin and yeah. fucking little kids are wearing this and all this. And that's another thing I want to talk about is like, when I make kids clothes, I'm planning to, like, it's going to be all organic cotton, like, shit nice. like that. And it just, even if a guy just reads it, a father reads it, a mother reads it, that, oh, I wonder why he's selling it with organic cotton. Yeah. Now they're aware. Oh, maybe the other shirts aren't good. Maybe we shouldn't put them in the polyester fucking Paw Patrol shirt. Yeah. You know, that <laughs> yeah. was two cents. Yeah. It's like that. Sh <sighs> On tour, I witnessed a lot of shit, like, you know, a mother won't know. It's not their fault that they're pregnant and eating McDonald's. And yeah, like, yeah. They are not aware that that has an effect on the child, you know? And that's what I want to, like, just wake people up to. Like, especially if you're pregnant, like, everything you do affects mm. your body. Like, it's, it's just how yeah. it is. It's fucked. It kind of relates to how you say, like, you know, when you're on tour and these people, like, living their life, they... It's like a lot of times they want to do shit like that and they mm -hmm. want to be as pure as possible, but life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. It's like what you said where it's like you want to spread your message as wide as you can because mm -hmm. it's obviously a good message. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to be on TikTok like, hey, guys, yeah, so today. Exactly, bro. So it, and it's like the same. You have to find this middle ground. Yeah. But I think the only, the only thing that I'll say about like red 40 and aluminum in the armpits is people think like, well, you know, I don't eat sugar. So the, the deodorant, yeah, yeah. but it's like, no, that is like really important. It's as bad as smoking cigarettes. No, the seed oil shit is the biggest one. I feel like that's why everyone gets cancer nowadays. Like, you know, autism rates are rising, all this fucked up shit. Like you could just look at the fucking charts of. When they start putting seed oils and like autism and cancer and all this and so or even just go fucking look at the people around us like yeah. they just look like yeah no. I mean and w and it's like we say this but obviously we're not fucking bodybuilders yeah that's but the another difference reason, yeah. we me and you have like vigor at least you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying like we have a yeah. lust for life and it's like you can tell when people yeah. are fully like medicated vaccinated yeah. What is it called? Uh, fluoridated? That they just <laughs> the become retarded. There. That's what I think like NPC is. Like yeah. NPC is an offensive term to be like, oh, everyone's an NPC, you know, but I really feel like NPCs are people who aren't aware and yeah. they're just living off of primal instincts and just poisoning themselves without knowing. Yeah. And that like I think fucks with you a little bit and like that's how you kind of like destroy it it's just like one thing after another you keep learning about it you know oh yeah and it's like you know people are using air fresheners in their car and like all this shit and it's like if, once you start eliminating all that shit you realize you don't need it you've been sold a product because people need profit you know like yeah. you've been sold something you don't need that causes cancer so once you keep learning one by one you're like oh i don't need that and i'm fine oh i'm better off without this oh no no 
You actually yeah. save money. Like I only spend money on good food. That's mm-hmm. it. I only spend money on good food, steaks, grass-fed fed steaks, you know, like cast iron pans, all that. Yeah. And yeah, that's another thing you said. Like I don't want to be on TikTok telling kids not to fucking vape and yeah. you know, yeah. don't don't eat McDonald's. Like it's some lame shit to do that, but like when you actually care about these kids, you kind of want to just tell them. Right. Like, I'm not selling any health shit that like I'm going to market to them, you know, like I'm just trying to tell kids because like in conversations and shit, like kids just don't know. Kids think they're just eating cheeseburger at McDonald's, you know, they don't realize it's fucking a paragraph of poison. Right, right, right. You know, like, like there's nothing wrong with a cheeseburger, but a cheeseburger should be beef Uh and cheese. Yeah. It's two ingredients. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's important what people say, like that, that's also about the price point thing about your clothes. It's like, if a shirt is organic cotton and, and also if it has a nice design, it's like it, you will keep it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, my next chapter, I'm anti all this fast fashion pollute in the world. Like all, I'm anti all this, um, overcharging kids for fucking Balenciaga and fucking all these brands that scam kids. Cause they know these, first of all, you guys don't fall victim to their fucking marketing strategies and all this. Like yeah, if you, if you don't have $3,000 to buy the Chrome Heart jeans, like if you don't have 10 times that amount, never buy them. Literally, <laughs> Just, yeah. Like you don't need that shit, bro. You're, you want to be fucking cool. That's it. Yeah. You can be cool wearing fucking the most regular shit. Literally. You know, like the most regular shit. Go to a thrift store, get a fucking Carhartt pants and a white shirt. That's the best, cleanest fit in the world. That's Literally. It. Yeah. And it's mad funny because, the th- uh, like, if you're wearing normal clothes, like, and you want to look better, uh-huh. the way you look better and the way you have the most dripped outfit wearing Carhartt and white t-shirt is, like, if you look, if you yeah. look good in it. But it's, it's like, like, so yeah. if, if a kid goes, yo, how do I make my outfit better? Uh-huh. You say, well, maybe and you should lose some pounds, weight, buddy. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's really hard. So I think I'll just go spend yeah. money. No, it's it's really it's they. Uh, there's a word for it probably, but it's like compensating for insecurity. That's what it is. It's oh, yeah. like, fuck, like I can't talk to this girl, but if I'm wearing like this Balenciaga hoodie, I'm like a mysterious. You oh. might think I'm a millionaire, like you know, oh, like dude. The and thing it's is, fucked it's up. So the girl's sad. gonna like you. Look, all these classic inspirational quotes: be yourself, fucking be confident, do all this shit. Literally, that's the most real shit ever, bro. Yeah. It's so, you know, I saw this kid, I saw this, uh, we were at this rooftop, like terrible gay, uh, influencer party in LA Mm -hmm. and there was this kid walking around who had a beanie and then he had dreads under them Mm -hmm. that was covering his whole face. Like, uh, like, you know, some opium swag. And I was just like, bro, like he's okay. So he's obviously doing it cause he thinks girls like it. Uh I'm like, bro, you literally had like, first of all, no girl's ever going to walk up to you and go, wow, you're so mysterious. I'm like, bro, you have a better like by a margin of like ten thousand percent chance of like getting a girl if you just walk up to her wearing anything, <laughs> wearing this fit. If if I w- if we were at a party right now and I was wearing full Balenciaga, the coolest outfit, but I was acting mysterious in the corner versus this outfit, and I just said, "Hey, I think you're really yeah, pretty. Yeah. What's your name?" The percentage <laughs> chance that I would get a girl is like a literally a million. Like it's so fucked up because I think a lot of things can be enjoyed. Like pretty purely like people, some people really like Chrome hearts, you know, like yeah. Japanese guys who collect. Yeah. And them. also I'm not like the brands. I love Chrome. Yeah. Hearts. Yeah. I love Chrome hearts so much. I spent so much money on Chrome hearts. I love yeah. Chrome hearts. Balenciaga is cool too. Like, you know, there, there's is history like, Oh, this designer, like, you yeah. know, that shit's cool. Like Mike, the ruler, he's into all that shit, but the these person, kids don't fucking hell care no, about that shit. No. You know, they don't care about the story. They don't care about the family. They don't care about the designer. <laughs> They're like, I'm buying this shirt for confidence and fucking for to flex on someone or something. It's disgusting. You know? yeah. yeah. It's don't fall victim to that shit. Guys. Yeah. Don't fall victim. To and that that's shit. the thing. It's like everything can be enjoyed and with a pure motive, I uh-huh. think. Like, but everything can also become something detrimental, yeah. like video games. Like if uh-huh. you're like a retarded, fat retard <laughs> and you got nothing going for you, I tell you to quit video games. But I'm not going to turn to Austin and say stop playing Fortnite because uh-huh. Austin, you know, you understand what I'm saying. Like Fortnite yeah. is freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> no, everything you just gotta you just That's gotta be clip. aware. Like if you're <laughs> playing Fortnite, you could know I could get addicted to this and ruin my right. life and be a fucking retard and waste all my fucking time. <laughs> I am playing Fortnite thinking that all the time, you know? Yeah. Like, this is fun, but I'm yeah. not gonna waste my fucking life doing this no, shit, no, no. you know? Fuck that. But you can still have fun with it, you know? Yeah, of course. And what were we saying? Just like about Chrome Hearts and the girls and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, it all comes from confidence. And people will probably comment, say, Aspid's just saying this and charges $200 for blah, 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 blah. Yes, I do, guys. But look, I never, ever fucking overcharge for anything yeah. where it's like, I know I could play some retarded fucking image where I'm mysterious yeah, and like, yeah. I pop out like this in a photo and I wear all black. And I make chair emoji posts, you know, like artsy fartsy bullshit yeah. and play my role. But instead I'm out here talking like a normal fucking person, talking to the kids. You know, I don't care about yeah. I'm lifestyle there. shit. You're not no trying to ego. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I know, so don't fucking get me wrong if you're saying, oh blah, blah, blah. I could play that fucking game and have kids buying thousand dollar fucking jeans and shit, you yeah. know. But I always say I'm not doing that to my fans. What the fuck, you know? Hell no. Everything is always affordable, and I'm trying to try and try and make it more affordable. More and and every dollar and that you make is going back into yeah. it. You're you Bro. could have ten Lamborghinis, you don't, you know. We could tell these people. We'll show them fucking bank statements every fucking month. Over a hundred thousand dollars goes back into this shit. I don't have any fucking... I don't spend money on myself. Yeah. That's it. I don't. It's yeah. all going back, and it's all going to come back. All the time and money that I put into this shit is coming back, oh, yeah. and it's going to be big. Yeah. And it's snowballs and snowballs and snowballs, bro. It's I want all Made in America factories. I want to build a shoe factory. I want to build a fucking cut and sew facility. I have the screen print facility. You know, I want to have control of everything. And that's way in the future, but my brand blanket that I never, it's just a fucking name right now. Mm -hmm. I want it all to be made in my factories from the experience in the next 10 years. You know, yeah. this shit could come out in 10, 20 years, bro. Yeah. But like, it's about the long term plan. I'm only 25 years old. You know, I have the vision, you know, yeah. like it's long term. Yeah. And kids ask me on tour. I get a lot of questions like, what advice do you have for, you know, someone who's making clothes? It's like, sometimes I'm just like, I look at them and I say, you have to sacrifice everything you have in life right now. Yeah, yeah. You cannot be fucking hanging out, doing bullshit. You cannot just be hoping I wear your shirt and you blow up and then you make another scam product to make another 20 bucks. You have to have pure intent in your heart mm -hmm. and say, no, I want to be an artist. I want to create this for the world. I think the world is missing this. I think this. I want to make fucking people smile. You need to have pure intent yeah. and always do the right thing and be smart and devote your whole entire life. Yeah. I'm devoting my entire life for the storybook after I die to be remembered like Elvis or some shit, you know? Like, so I sometimes look at it and I say, are you fucking sure? Are you yeah. ready? Are you ready to fucking devote your life? Because it's, it's honestly insulting if you think you could just drop a few fucking things and be on the same page. No. It takes dedication. My brain is fully occupied on only thinking about this shit. What's next? What's next? And that's where it all comes from. It's just really just planning it out long term. And pure intent yeah. is what I think. Mm -hmm. God lets it all work out for me. I'm not doing this for selfish reasons. He knows it's something good for the world if he helps me out, you know? Mm -hmm. I go out there with pure intent. You, What you get is what you put out. I go to the fucking 50-state tour. I'm like, I could get shot right now. Mm -hmm. I get DMs every every fucking state saying, yo, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sure there's people who DM me that and pulled up and they see I'm just fucking chilling. It's mm -hmm. just like wholesome. Kids are smiling. I'm just trying to inspire people. That's it. If I had a chance to inspire someone, I was given a platform. It just happened. So I'm like, yo, I have to do the right thing. That's yeah. it. Good and evil is a real fucking battle, bro. Yeah. It is. It's yeah, crazy. the good the pure intentions thing is so true. It's like if if you're there's the scene in Fight Club where uh 
where Tyler Dirt, and this is kind of cringe, he says, self-improvement is uh, <laughs> masturbation. The key is self-destruction. Because mm -hmm. it's true, like, if there's a kid who wants to, like, make clothes, but he's not really sure what his intention is, mm -hmm. it's like, if you were to tell him, yeah, so what you got to do is you got to get an LLC, mm -hmm. then you got to burn screens. Yeah, you got to yeah. learn how to burn. It's like, no, there's no, no first formula. you need to go back to caveman yeah. and destroy your ego mm -hmm. and make sure your intentions are yeah. pure. Because it doesn't matter if you can print the most epic t-shirt or mm -hmm. do this, that, and the third. That's why it's like, it's like, well, why do they even buy us pizza? It's just a squiggly face. Mm -hmm. It's not about the face. Yeah. It's like, that's why everybody and their fucking mom can make the most epic Alibaba product, even though we were doing it five years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's like, nowadays, everybody can make the most epic thing. But yeah. it's like, you know the intention. Yeah. This motherfucker wants to make a buck. And that's what makes the product shit in mm. the end. So... Yeah, just check your yeah. fuck. If you if Quick you want to make something, you sh you have to check your intentions. And if your intentions are bad and you continue to make the product anyway, then you're literally a force for the devil and evil. Yeah. And which it you just don't be, it's not going to work ideally. out. And it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. I fully believe my success is based on having pure intent and saying, "I hope this works out," mm -hmm. or being confident and saying, "I know this will work out." Because this is a good thing, and it needs to be in the world, and it's going to happen, and God got my back. And yeah. it works out amazingly. People would not understand how last minute, fucking no money. I had just enough money to fucking buy the last thing I needed. I'm back to zero, but let's drop it. Boom, drop it. Mm -hmm. Next chapter, next chapter, you know? And I'm not scared to fucking spend money invested in something, you know? I'm not out here talking about, which I am going to be. <laughs> What? <laughs> like, I'm going to manage my money correctly. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to start off, I'm like, I'm breaking through every fucking wall. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Oh, I have to do the art show. The art show was done last minute. I tried to buy a building in LA. It didn't work. 730 Studios, you know about it. I said, fuck it. We're packing up. We're leaving. We drove from LA to New York. Did the art show. Set it up in a few fucking days. I had to pay $60,000 to rent the spot for a month in mm -hmm. Soho. The art show made $60,000, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I said... Look, I have a fucking art show and yeah. it happened and I learned a bunch of shit and, you know, it's all fucking worth it. And I think a, a lot of the kids don't might not understand this, but they think when you're talking about going broke and mm -hmm. running out of money and sacrifice, they might think you're talking about like five years ago, yeah. but you're no, talking, talking about, about right last now. month. Yeah, <laughs> like the this. sacrifice after 10 years continues like it's not. Let's it, pull it up. The light at the end of the tunnel is elusive. Yeah, we'll show people because. And this is why, like, this money was not here to begin with, so it's all right, trying right, right. to do it the right way, you know? Right now, I have $6,000, right? <laughs> yeah. On tour, we made, like, 300 k right? <laughs> yeah. 300 k Where does it go? You got to pay people. You got to do this. You got to do all that. Look, let's see. This is real shit. And there's no, oh, he has a savings account with 200 Yeah, yeah that's there's what no. they think. This is it. Oh, but you have the property. It's like, bro, shut up. Like, August spending, 120K. Show it, Sebs. <laughs> Is there any sense of numbers in there? 120K. It's all on machines. It's on blanks. It's on paying people. It's I'm working on 100 things at once, and, and it's fucked. And look at this. Hold on, Sebs. Let's see July. 178k. So there's your 300 grand right there. June. 135k. May. 75k. I was I was trying to set up Concern. tour, you know. <laughs> April 104k. This is unbelievable to me. I tell someone, oh, I spend over 100k a month on this shit. You know, yada yada yada. I don't have a fucking drug addiction. I don't have a gambling addiction. I don't have any of this. It all goes into what's coming next. Right. People will see. And I'm just, this shit is possible, guys. I've made money. You cannot let that shit get to your head. You got to keep it flowing nonstop. Yeah. Nonstop. Like, you cannot let that get to your head and say, and just don't be nervous. Like, oh, no, I'm going to put 20K in a savings account. Which is probably a smart idea. Don't listen to me. But 
Me, I just say, let me full send it. Right, right, right. Keep right, right. throwing it. Keep throwing the bricks until the fucking house falls down, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like I'm almost there. I have that fucking platform where I'm like, all right, I have the print shop. I can make anything I fucking right, right. want. I'm setting up the cut and sew facility. The next chapter is coming. Coming strong. That's your be fucking world bricks. Wide. When you buy jeans from this guy, you think he's charging 200 because he wants to go buy Balenciaga mm -hmm. shirt. It's going right back yeah. into the fucking factory. Give him a fucking break. And I wish people would see that. People hear 100K. Like if, yeah. if you made 100K three yeah. years ago, yeah. a guy on the street would say, he's rich. That guy's rich. <laughs> he made 100K like three years ago. Like he's rich. No, no, no. I'm not rich. I am poor. Bro. <laughs> yeah. This money disappears. I have so much fucking shit to pay off. I live a fucking... I'm not out here buying Rolexes and none of that shit. I don't own, own any of that shit. I right. don't own a luxury car. I don't own a house. I don't own any of that shit. Everything I own is for the fucking product. Right? Yeah. And like, that's what I care about is leaving behind my legacy. Right, 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 right. And showing kids this is possible. And people who are just watching out who don't know me, they're like, oh, you know, that can't be explained, but, but. I want people to know I've been grinding hard every fucking day of my life for the past 10 years, bro. Literally. Bro's, bro owns a factory and two pickup trucks. So the, the, the two Work pickup trucks. trucks are to drive the shit around. And, and we're giving one away. And he's giving one away. Yeah. So one. Yeah. So hop off his I, fucking back. I don't even have a license, guys. I have a permit. I just got it. Shout out Everett, man. Driver of the <laughs> month. Shout out Everett, guys. A lot of my whole shit comes from my brother, Everett. He taught me a lot. He's my older brother, three years older, you know, and I really, we were into cool shit as kids, and I feel like that's what I base all this shit off of, wrestling, fucking Tony Hawk, and fucking video games, and, like, my dad taught us about comics and all this shit, you know? Like, what is that today? Mm. If me and Everett were born in this period of time we're playing Fortnite and the new call of duty that's the same fucking bullshit over and over again and it's like what is inspiring these kids you used to be able to walk into gamestop and just pick a game yeah. based off of the cover yeah say this looks cool let's fucking get that oh yeah now people don't have to try so no oh yeah we'll just put it there it's a free download blah, 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 blah. it's fucking brainwashing yeah People have given up trying to make movies. People have given oh, yeah. up fucking trying to make an original game. And the main thing I support for is even if there's a team of kids working on an independent game, that's fire. I know how hard this industry and life makes it for those kids to be successful. No matter how hard they try and all this shit, there could be a big co corporation that buys them out. Big corporation who just steals their idea. All this shit. Fuck all these corporations. They're all evil. I never worked with any of these corporations. I'm never collabing with Gucci. I'm never collabing with Nike. I'm never collabing with any of these fucking brands. Fuck that. I'm trying to show people we could do it by ourselves. We don't need anyone. Seriously. I've done all this shit by myself. All by myself. People, kids today, I feel like they're chasing these cosigns of corporations mm -hmm. and all this. Fuck these corporations. They're scared of you. You yeah. hold the power. We are the kids who hold the power. Mm -hmm. Balenciaga and all this shit says, oh, I hope the kids still fuck with it next yeah. season. No, no. They're laughing at you buying because you're buying this shit. You're they spending you. hard-earned money. $20 is someone's hour of work, bro. And mm -hmm. they're charging $4,000 for hoodies. You don't need that shit. That's what I'm trying to tell these fucking kids. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, back to what I was saying, if you have... A group of kids working on a video game or something. There's so much bullshit you have to do. Even if it's a success. Oh, taxes take half of the fucking profit. All the shit. It's all fucking scam. That's the matrix. I'm learning just to fucking deal with this shit. And yeah. it's like, basically, what I'm trying to say is, I'm trying to support that group of kids who are right, working right, on right. that shit. And I want to put kids together and like, yo, let's make this. Let's work on this. Let's work on this. You know, like, that's what I was hoping Kanye would do, bro. Mm -hmm. Kanye talks about all these ideas, getting people together. He was going to make the Donda West video game and all this. And I was like, this is cool. He, you know, a lot of people we know, he even gets involved on projects and shit. And it's like, what comes out? There's nothing made, bro. <laughs> yeah. There's not a fucking Kanye Yeezy store we could walk to in New York City. 
bro, you're the richest fucking black guy, billionaire in the world. Like, right? Yeah. yeah. What can we do, bro? Where, where is this shit in real life that we could go to? You know? But yeah. Kanye is the GOAT, no matter what. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. him. But it's like, come on, bro. Get your shit make together. It real. Let's make something real. I'm working with the pieces we got, and I'm always there to give kids something. With zero dollars, let's do a meetup in Union Square. Let's do a meetup in Central Park. Oh, I want to give away these fucking masks, you know? Mm -hmm. I've done all that shit. I've, with zero dollars, I've figured out shit to make it work, mm -hmm. you know? So it's all about just doing the right thing, bro. <laughs> it's frustrating, bro. Yeah, it is. Because I have no one to look up to, bro. And I have to set the example for these kids. I meet these kids and shake their fucking hands. I'm not hiding behind the fucking computer screen, right? Mm -hmm. I have a responsibility to teach these kids. I seen, I'm inspired by people, bro. Mm -hmm. Virgil, X, mm -hmm. they're dead. They're fucking gone. Mm -hmm. Who is going to fill that void, bro? I've had conversations with X talking about how can we help the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Virgil was on the right path. And look how many dick riders are around him just trying to do the same shit he's doing but not caring about the actual shit, you know? Mm -hmm. There's so many imitations, but Virgil, he gave us a chance. He gave everyone a chance, bro. He actually cared. He was crazy like us, you know? Like, I know he cared about, like, the culture, you know? Yeah. And who is going to fill that void? I, look, I could be fucking relaxing and chilling. It's like, right, right, right. I'm going to do another drop, make fucking 100K right now, you know? Yeah. Bro, I could be dropping every single day. I wait for the right moment always, and I don't want to oversaturate shit. I want to keep it cool. I don't want to just sell out, basically, you know? Yeah. Because who's going to fill that void? And I, I could be chilling, but I put that responsibility on myself. Yeah. Because, look, I don't even fucking like myself, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously. Like, <laughs> like, I just, there's no one out there. Yeah. There's no competition. There's nothing. There's no fucking one guy to just say, hey, I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to try to fucking inspire one kid. If I inspired one kid, that's amazing, bro. Yeah. You know? Just fucking guys. Should be ashamed of themselves. You could be chilling, but now you've got the world on your back. I'm just ready to take on that responsibility and, like, I'm fine with that because that's, that's what gives life meaning, bro. Yeah, of course. You know, like. If you were people, chilling, you'd kill yeah. yourself. No, oh, definitely. People search for something to do, you know? And that's what it's about, finding something to do. You know me, like, we were not, like, fashion people, you know? Like, if you told me I was a fashion designer and when I was met you in Sunday school, I'd be like, that's gay. You yeah. know, I'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck? That's so weird. But no, I'm going to take it to the extreme, and that's it. There he is. Is there anything else you want to say? You want to do a, ex a final an exiting statement? The pieces will come together over time, bro. The pieces will come together over time. And I'm about to, you know, just go harder, post more. I'm on a weight loss journey. That's why I'm doing this shirtless. Yes, I'm insecure about my body. Yes, I'm a fat fuck. But you got to put yourself out there. And, you know, I posted saying, okay, I'm 243 pounds right now. When I posted that, it got so many kids inspired. Mm -hmm. And not only for them, it's like for me, I have to, I have to do it now. Because I posted mm -hmm. it. I said, watch my fucking weight loss journey. I'm in the gym every single day. I'm eating one meal a day, clean food. You know, like I cook myself. And I'm just trying to lead by example. That's it. And the next chapter I'm excited for. I literally haven't been able to sleep the past few days. I'm up writing down ideas and shit. Like, so the next chapter. Yeah, and, and if, I love you guys. If say if you could say if there's one, like, one one kid watching who's like on Discord, uh -huh. watching porn, eating McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. Porn is porn evil. shit, bro. But say something directly to him, guys. We all know you're jerking off. Every kid does it nowadays, right? And I wish I knew when I was younger the effects porn would have on my life. Mm. You don't know you're addicted until you try to quit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was late Try night to go a night without jerking. No, it's fucked up. But look, 
If you're sitting at home wondering how you could live life better, take it day by day. Don't overwhelm yourself. Learn one thing. Take it day by day, one positive thing. Don't drink plastic water. Cut that out. Um, don't eat seed oils. Just uh, learn about it. Just learn about one thing. Teach yourself. We, it's our responsibility. These people who are in charge don't care about us. No one cares about you more than yourself. You have to take responsibility. Don't think what everyone else is doing is right. Mm -hmm. You could always do the opposite, and you learn things. That's it. So just day by day, bro. One, one thing at a time. That's it. All right. Done. So today, guys, we're going over the five top ten fashion tips with our creator, creator of the day, Ass Pizza. Yeah. So look, we got seven thirty footwear. By the way, I forgot to say it out there. <laughs> seven thirty footwear. Soon to be made in America at my own factory. If you keep supporting, we we get there. We get there. We get there. But these are the Uggs for the ladies and the freaky guys. But look. <laughs> 7.30 footwear, 7.30 printing. We got ass pizza. We got the next chapter, Babbitt, coming. We got videos, 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 movies, 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 books, 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 books. Everything you can think of, we got have a great day. Listen, I'm going to tell this guy, keep doing these fucking podcasts. Tell him how much you like the podcast and get him motivated. Get him to start fucking posting, guys. That's how we have the power. We make the content. Fuck H3H3, H3, all these fucking guys. This guy. Come on. Let's make the fucking videos. Yeah. Hell yeah. Peace out. Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> that was fine, yeah.